The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Wednesday morning, 60 minutes to go until that opening bell. Coming to you live from TFNN. we got a few video problems going on, but you got my audio. We're going to do this first segment with audio only. That's okay because we're going to be looking at a lot of charts, a lot of the stories going on with the market action so far. Quite the overnight session, as in positive territory yet again. You back it up to where we were for some full context on early, early Monday, 29 23. Pretty remarkable. You hit a spike high in the S&Ps yesterday at about 9 a.m. of 31. Let's get the exact high. 31.56 is that high. And then you trade down about 90 points to a low of 3,063. Remarkable action. But guess what, folks? We finish it up right around the range, right around the range of 31.16 in the S&Ps. Right now, 31.35, we were higher at about 4 in the morning. You reach a high of about 31.47. You then make it down to a low of 31.17. We're a solid 15 to 16 points above that low right now at 31.33. NASDAQ positive by almost 50 points, 10,010. You get the Dow up 141 points, 26,335. Crude off 38 cents at $38. We'll get the EIA inventories. We get that today. Two hours from right now, 10.30 a.m., Tom and I will be on the air for those. Always some interesting times for crude. You back it up to the beginning of the week on crude, 34.36 the low. Made it above 39 briefly. Crude sells off with the market yesterday, currently right around 38 at 37.98. Gold contract backing off a bit, 17.24. The lows yesterday of 17.06. Silver up four pennies at 17.69. And notes and bonds, pretty tame action right now you get the 10-year flat at 138.14 you got the 30-year minus four ticks at 175.18 in terms of what else you have happening around the market jumping around to some of the stories so i'm going to jump right into COVID because that's driving a lot of the action we'll get to these other stories in a moment um we saw the sell-off in terms of the market really whether it was fed chairman powell a week ago wednesday was his speech uh statement two o'clock conference press conference 230. That began the sell-off. Thursday was the rough day in the markets. We rebounded a bit from there, but you back up uh, in terms of the numbers that we're coming in at, and there's some stark numbers. I was jumping around this morning. So Florida, highest on my radar, because that's where TFNN is based. That's where I am based. Some big numbers there, biggest of them all. We're at about 2,700 cases in the last day. That's June 16th. Whether you jump over from the New York Times data, you jump over to the Florida Department of Health numbers. Their number for the 15th was about 2,700 as well. So big numbers there on the rise. And when you look to uh, testing, you gotta look to testing, right? You definitely have to, it's a fair question. It's not the result, uh, uh, excuse me, it's not the cause of the numbers going up in Florida, folks. I know Arizona's a big deal as well. We got our man Larry Pesavento out there. Uh, doesn't mean the economy shouldn't be back open, man. People got to get out, right? People got to be able to live their lives if they want to. But people also have a right to know what's going on so that they can make educated decisions. And that's what I'm trying to do is put some of the numbers out there that you may not see. You look at the percent positive, okay? This is the testing. This is the Florida Department of Health, okay? This is their report. They put it out. They update it on a daily basis. This is the number of people tested per day. They have recent data as of two days ago. Well, we're seeing how quickly things are going up. OK, under 40,000 tests on the 15th when you do total tests. OK, now this includes this number here is going to include people who are tested multiple times in the same day. A person is only counted once for each day they are tested. But when you do the the total number of negatives percent positive, 
okay, versus the number of positives, you're looking at 9.8% positive. When you really just do it, this is the uh, a simple number in terms of positivity for new cases. This number, a number of people who test positive for the first time divided by all the people tested for that day. You see the spike there, folks, from 4.4 to 7.4 in two days. We were at 2.5 in June 6th. And again, this data recent as of two days ago, not the numbers you want to see. Nonetheless, a lot of states really getting hit. When you pull up the, the, the times data, you go to the U.S., all right, we saw the Florida curve. The curve within the entire country, unfortunately, is uh, is pretty flat at a stagnant amount of about 20,000 cases a day. We'll get there. There it is. We're actually uh, seven day averaging even above that level, right? Somewhere in the neighborhood of 22, 23. Death tolls are going down, which is a good thing. You're seeing uh, cases come out with whether it's proper care, we saw a steroidal drug yesterday that was coming out that might be promising for people in the worst of shape. Uh, but when you get into here and talk about the states that are rising, yeah, we're talking about 21 states, folks. Florida, one of them, one of the steepest curves. There's Texas in there as well. We've heard about the areas in there. Uh, North Carolina, Arizona, as I mentioned. Look at Alabama, South Carolina, Utah. Um, so if you are in those states, I would be practicing some safe social distancing, and we'll see how that hits the economy. As um, in Florida here, those are some stark numbers. We talked about it. You have uh, TFNN offices based in St. Petersburg, beautiful downtown St. Petersburg, Florida. Unfortunately, a few of the restaurants that had just opened had to shut within days because their staff was testing positive, bringing it back to the economy. You know, that uh, you can't open it back up if things are raging and people are having to shut down businesses, people won't attend. Um, it's, it's, it's out there, folks. And so this is going to continue when you have 21 states rising, you got about 12 staying the same and the cases are decreasing. The, the most worrisome thing is that the states that are decreasing are where it was the worst of the worst, where really everything shut down. They shut it down hard. They made sure that that curve was dramatically almost negligible. Uh, it's New England area in a big way and some of the other hardest hit areas, along with some other states thrown in there as well. New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, uh, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Delaware, Washington, D.C., New Hampshire, Maine, uh, a lot of them, a lot of them for sure. Okay, jumping back to... The finance market. So we got a couple numbers out here today. Number one, housing starts. So this number coming out right at 830, 974,000 in May. They were looking for 1.095 million. So a miss there. But home buyer mortgage demand spikes to 11 year high as rates hit another record low. So this number out earlier today, mortgage applications to purchase a home rose 4% last week from the previous week and were a remarkable 21% higher. This is a purchase, folks, not a refinance, okay? Uh, that was the ninth consecutive week of gains and the highest volume in more than 11 years. The average contract volume, uh, excuse me, contract interest rate for a 30-year fixed mortgage decreased to 3.3%. That is quite a number down from 3.38. Mortgage applications to purchase a home rose 4% last week. Getting into some of the more numbers. All right, so buyers were also fueled by a new record low mortgage rate, average contract rate, as we mentioned, for a 30-year fixed rate, conforming loan, 3.3%, with points decreasing to 0.29 from 0.30. Lower rates also fueled refinance demand. That's what I want to get into and find. Those applications also rising 10% for the week. And I mean, who's not refinancing at 3.3%? Maybe if you've refinanced, I, I refinanced in the last year myself, uh, last October, and I'm happy with what I got. But man, those rates are lower for sure. Uh, big numbers though, as the mortgage market, the housing market continues to be strong. But the number in terms of starts a little bit under what they were looking for. Um, yeah, they expected 1.095, and it came in at 974. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be going over the equities with actions ahead of Wednesday trading. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metals sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 the prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We got everything working in spades right now, and the market working in spades as well. Back on video, back in positive territory. S&P is positive by 12, trading at 3130. The Dow above 10,000 right now, excuse me, NASDAQ above 10,000 right now, up 45 points at 10,006. The Dow up 113, 26,308. And you see where we're bumping up to. I mean, these levels, when you put it on a daily for some context here, just keep in mind the volatility you're gonna see here. We went over the numbers in COVID, if you see numbers, shut down if you see some of the retail stores coming out and saying hey you know things are persisting in some of these states and even though we're open we're not seeing the rebound that the market might have been hoping for or indicating with that v-shaped pop uh just something to consider folks because it's remarkable for me to consider that we're approaching all-time highs in the s p with everything going on yes the fed is throwing literally trillions of dollars at the economy yes that's going to matter but does it warrant right now the s p at all-time highs maybe it warrants it in a year or two um and maybe the market's just getting a little ahead of itself but don't forget about these types of volatile days that are just literally six days removed from the markets trading down five to seven percent in a daily session. Okay, jumping back to equities or what's going on in the market. Other news out there just happening as we came on the air. U.S. home construction rebounding 4.3 percent in May. So U.S. home construction rebounding 4.3 percent last month. The Commerce Department reported that. Home builders are hoping that as the nation reopens, housing will post a strong recovery. And man, every indicator in that industry says that is so. Target, Target in the news, they're going to raise their minimum wage to $15 an hour months before its deadline. 
The employees are also going to receive a one-time bonus of $200 to recognize their work during the coronavirus pandemic. The, they had pre pledged to raise that by the end of 2020 to 15. So ahead of that action with everything going on with all of those workers, I mean, one of those cases, right? Target, you're working in Target when things were getting the worst of the worst. You're an essential worker. You got to be in there. Uh, Target right now going to open a up a bit with the market above 119, but you can see not quite back to 130.24. We, of course, had some strong retail sales numbers yesterday. Walmart backing off its high as well, 133. 38 to 119.65. You jump over to Amazon. You just can't hold Amazon down, man. We're gonna we're gonna open at 26.38. We closed at 26.15. Uh, some of the other tech stocks, since we're on them, Apple shares. Apple looking to open at an all-time high, folks. 3.55 right now. It's been that high 3.54 before COVID. You were only looking at about 3.20. Microsoft shares. <clears throat> Excuse me. Microsoft trading at 193.57. And yeah, 198 was theirs. We're going to open it about 195. Tesla, we're bidding 985 from 982. All right, Beyond Meat. So they're going to try and sell cheaper value packs of its meatless burgers. Beyond Meat will sell 10 packs. The burger value packs narrow the price gap with traditional beef patties. You got to buy 10 of them, though. B Y N D, there's your Beyond chart. Talk about some volatility from 240. To 40, well, 48, and uh, we're going to open back 156 on Beyond. Pretty remarkable action in that stock. And Facebook, so this is an interesting one and in how this will play out. Uh, Facebook, Zuckerberg, been in the press a lot, talking about how he approaches, whether it's information period shared on Facebook, let alone political advertising post shared on Facebook. And now it comes out that Facebook will allow users to turn off political ads. Who doesn't want to turn off political ads, folks, right? Uh, he didn't say when this feature will roll out, but I mean, you've never had that option before. Hopefully it's something they make super simple. I mean, the amount of ads, Florida, a swing state, um, the amount of ads that we see being such a big state that is potentially up for grabs in the presidential elections, man, it would be great if uh, Comcast or Frontier, uh, the former Verizon had an option to turn off all political advertising. I mean, uh, that's, that's, that's newsworthy for sure. And we'll see how it plays out. For those of you who've already made up your minds and just want the election to be over, we hear you. So we're introducing the ability to turn off seeing political ads. He wrote in an op-ed published on USA Today, and that was yesterday. Um, cool action. I didn't see that. That's that's. Uh It'd be great, you know, if we could get that out of there, because most of the time, those political ads, they're really not filling your mind with a lot of uh, important true details of what's going on in the world. From 137 Facebook, we're gonna open basically flat at 235 so far. All right, let's jump into some of the equities that are moving this morning. Oracle, they reported their numbers last night, I believe, five cents a share above estimates. The software giant's revenue came in below forecast. Key customers in markets like retail, hospitality, postponed spending, makes sense. Oracle shares, we gotta zoom it in because we're gonna open a bit lower. And there's the numbers last night from 55, spike to a low of 51.70. Conference call began at 5 o'clock. We're still down. You're talking about 5% or so to 52.77 on Oracle. Yeah, Norwegian. So this one happening last night as well. They extended the suspension of most voyages through the end of September. Uh, the news is pressuring shares of all of those crude lines, cruise lines. Talk about some volatility, folks. Is it MCLH? Yeah, Norwegian. So you see the fall from above 21 to below 18. We're going to open 1888. CCL Car Carnival shares. You see the volatility last night. It's rebounded a bit. Um, some of the airlines since we're here. United down a bit. Delta Airlines down a bit as well. Southwest will limit ticket sales to two-thirds of capacity through September 30th to ensure the middle seats remain empty. Separately, Southwest said in an SEC filing that it sees June operating revenue down 70, 75 percent, better than the guidance of 80 to 85. Pretty remarkable that you can say that you're going to see June revenue down 75 percent and you beat expectations that you gave yourself, which was uh, to be down 85 percent.
United sweetened a voluntary buyout offer for flight attendants. So United said that while thousands of employees signed up for the buyout, the number was not enough as they need to buy out more of those flight attendants with everything going on. Tesla signed a new three-year pricing deal with Japan's Panasonic. We pulled up Tesla shares holding up well, right at around 1,000. And uh, let's see, Amazon rated a buy in new coverage. Amazon, a buy? What a revolutionary statement. Whoever gave that company that coverage, give them a raise. With the firm saying that Amazon's media business is worth $500 billion due to hidden value. That would make Amazon's media assets, including Prime Video, Music, and Twitch, worth nearly as much as Amazon's cloud. It is remarkable the amount of businesses that Amazon is in, folks. Uh, you almost can't list them all off in terms of being able to provide every single good you can think of, number one, being able to provide the cloud services to every single company you can think of. I mean, there's no reason why they can't start offering delivery services to everybody. And then you talk about Twitch. A lot of people not too familiar with Twitch. Twitch is a rival to the likes of YouTube itself um, in terms of the amount of streamers, live streamers that go on there, whether it's gamers, whether it's poker players, whether it's any type of live stream that you can have on your Twitch platform. And Amazon's, Amazon owns all, all of that. I believe they bought Twitch for about a billion dollars a while back. Uh, Amazon just, just can't overstate what they got going on there. Groupon, they're out with their numbers. They lost $1.63. They were looking to lose $1.91, according to analysts. The company's revenue also beat Groupon. I was a Groupon fan about 10 years ago. Um, and, and, and then I realized that I bought Groupons and I struggled to use them, as many others did. But Groupon from 73 down to 10, but we're going to open near $29 on Groupon on their numbers up just recently. I mean, check that out, right? On the 11th, we're at 20. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back to finish up the program, see what else we have on tap on Wednesday trading. We'll take a look at some of the crude, gold, and the markets. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mattering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P is positive by 11, the Dow positive by 78, losing a little bit of steam since we came on the air at about 8.30. We started at 31.35, so we've trailed off about five S&P points over the last 24 minutes, but still positive, expecting that market open. Jumping around some of the news stories as well, Beijing. So they're dealing with another flare-up, and it's really remarkable, the difference, folks, in terms of the approach that China is taking in terms of just shutting everything down. Um, a fresh outbreak, we're talking about infected 130 people. Folks, we're dealing with 3,000 people a day in Florida, okay? And, and, and Beijing just shuts it all down immediately to stop things. So quite a difference, but more than 1,200 flights in and out of Beijing canceled Wednesday as, Chinese, as the Chinese capital rep wrestles with a fresh coronavirus outbreak, infected at least 130 people. So Beijing, that happening there. And another story that if, the world was not full of remarkable news stories that could fill the pages right now of what's going on is the clash between India and China yesterday occurring on the border that they share, that resulting in 20 Indian troops unfortunately getting killed, not known the numbers on the China side. Folks, if this was the U.S. and we had 20 troops killed in a clash with a, with a country we shared a border with, both uh, nuclear countries as well, that is something we in the world nobody wants to see escalated and hopefully that's the case but we'll see how this plays out as you have Modi um, the Prime Minister of India vowing to defend India's sovereignty as you would expect uh, escalating tensions there not good for the worldwide basis at all all right jumping back to some of the markets as we wrap it up and we're seeing the market give it up a bit 3126 right now keep an eye on that low at about 6 a.m. 3117 Backing off a bit in the markets, jumping over to the NASDAQ, we're positive by about 39 points right at 10,000. And the Dow right now positive by 33, just 33, 26,222. Stay tuned, folks. We got a treat this morning. We got our man Basil Chapman filling in for the man Larry Pezzavento. And folks, if you haven't tried it, Basil Chapman, he writes the opening call. Great trading service. While you listen to Basil at 9 o'clock, go check it out under newsletters. 30-day money-back guarantee for the opening call. Basil's great daily service. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back.